Why don't you obey Jesus and take Mary to your house? Don't you claim to be a disciple of the big Jesus? Bring Mary home. She must be at your house because that's what Christ commanded. Bring her into your heart. Your home is in your heart. Bring her into your soul. This is what Jesus commanded. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospels clearly show us that Mary is the path to Christ. Without Mary, there is no Jesus. It's not that Jesus couldn't have worked out, offered our salvation without Mary. That's not the point. That's not what is in discussion. Because that would kind of indicate that Jesus doesn't have the power to do it alone. The point is that Jesus didn't want to save humanity alone. He wanted to save it with Mary. And he wanted Mary to be the key to himself. I will give you an example. Why did Jesus want to have Mary to be the person in between uh, as a mother, as a person through whom he was to come into the world? We don't know. It's a mystery. What we do know is that Mary indeed is the key to go to Jesus. I will give you an example of the Gospels pointing out to the path that leads to salvation, meaning to Jesus himself, for Jesus is salvation. Let us go to the Gospel of John, chapter 2. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother then say to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, we don't know what happened a second after Jesus told his mother that the matter wasn't their problem, that his hour hadn't come yet. Did she smile to him to mean, please, please? What was that? Was that a gaze? Did, did, Jesus, did Jesus' mother give him a gaze? Something. Did she have some kind of gesture, an intimate manifestation of the kind of body language that two very intimate people have and understand. I know that when my son is angry at me or pleased with me, he doesn't need to say a word. My son Liam knows me very, very well. My son knows when I am confident, when I am unsure, with no words involved. My wife, Maria, knows when I'm angry. I, I, I don't need to say a word. I just walk in a certain way and then she knows that I'm pissed. Uh, in reverse as well. I know when Maria is completely displeased with me because she, she gives me a look. Like she gives me the look and then by looking or her look, I know that, whoa, uh, okay, I, I messed it up again. Notice that right now I've been choosing imperfections to make the point. When it comes to my wife, Maria, my son, Liam, well, we are imperfect. Um, still, we know each other very well. We often know what the other thinks without uttering a single word. But imagine Jesus and Maria, both of them are singless. The level of correct understanding between those two was too much for St. Joseph to bear. Let us continue. Jesus ordered six stone jars used for purification to be filled with water. What purification? In Deuteronomy, we are told that whenever someone touched a corpse, the person had to purify himself with water, blessed by the Levitical priest. This was a reflection of the later baptismal water through which the Holy Spirit purified a soul from original sin. Then we know that Jesus performed his first sign of miracle ever by transforming the water into wine, and that it was the best wine ever, prompting the steward to exclaim, everyone serves the bad wine later, but you have kept the best wine for now. Now here, the Bible highlights in a deciding fashion the crucial role of Mary. Let us go to John chapter 2, verse 11. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. What did his disciples believe in him? His glory, that he was God. Why? Because Mary petitioned him in behalf of the disciples, the guests in the Feast of Cana, and in behalf of all humanity, that something have to be done because there was no wine. And please remember that in this sense, we are talking about the wine that, of course, also signifies at that point, the blood of Jesus, the wine that was going to be offered as a new covenant for the forgiveness of sins, that blood that was going to be shed for our salvation. There was no any wine. The wedding feast of Cana, remember, also reflects, is a mirror of the wedding feast at the end of times. 
when Christ the groom comes to marry the church. The Bible is telling us that Mary is the key to Jesus. Jesus wasn't going to perform that miracle. But then again, Mary maybe smiled. Mary looked at Jesus in a certain way that prompted a gesture in Jesus that communicated to Mary that he was going to perform the miracle, the first sign. There is nothing that Jesus will deny to his mother. Her petitions are perfect, for she is full of grace, and the Lord is with her eternally. Now, if you're still in doubt, let us go to the Gospel of John, chapter 19. John, chapter 19, verse 25 through 27. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sisters, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, and he was standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. What is the meaning here? What is the teaching? The guideline to salvation? If we want to belong to Jesus, or if we want to be the Lord's disciple, we must bring his mother, our mother, home. What we can answer to our separate brethren from evangelical churches is this. Why don't you obey Jesus and take Mary to your house? Don't you claim to be a disciple of the big Jesus? Bring Mary home. She must be at your house because that's what Christ commanded. Bring her into your heart. Your home is in your heart. Bring her into your soul. This is what Jesus commanded. This is it, my dear audience. Remember, I am El Señor Moreno. God love you all.